Hey everybody, it's Chris Norman. Up to this point, I've been creating videos showing the mechanics of GURPS and hoping that you'd like to give it a try. In this video, I'm going to assume that you want to try, but you just need an idea of where to start and what to do. Just like with characters, the most important thing you can do when starting a GURPS game is pick a genre. Okay, that might sound obvious, but remember, many other RPGs only have a single broad genre. In GURPS, you can play many different genres, superhero, space, Old West, James Bond, and of course fantasy, whatever you want. So it's important to settle on a single genre that you want to start with. Trust me, once you get comfortable with GURPS, the concept of genre starts to lose meaning, since you can adapt GURPS to just about anything. Okay, second decision. Will GURPS Ultralight be enough? Sorry for the folding job, but hear me out. It's an incredibly rules-light version of GURPS, relying solely on the success roll and damage rolls, but it still shows off individual character development. Your players won't need to learn anything, really, other than how a success roll works. You just ask them the four or five things that they want their character to be good at, strength, intelligence, decks, or some professions, but they get to tell you the kind of character they want to play and not have to pick from some list of 15 or so set classes. The downside is, as the GM, you must adjudicate everything. But they're just success roles. Whenever the player asks you to do something, you decide what attribute or skill it might apply to, and then give them a modifier, and they roll 3d6 to get that number or under. Sound familiar? I've used GURPS Ultralight once, a long time ago. Funny, it was after I had learned how to play GURPS. I wanted to play a small one-shot for some friends, and I didn't feel that they would sit through the complete character generation. With Ultralight, I just asked them to name the five things they wanted their character to be known for. Did they want to be stronger than normal? Doubly stronger? Smarter? Quicker? Did they want to be really good at shooting things or using melee weapons or computer hacking? Once they told me their preferences, I created a quick character sheet for them, something like this. But GURPS Ultralight worked. The group solved the mystery and killed the evil monster. Everyone was happy, and it only took a few pieces of paper and three six-sided dice. But let's say you decide to move on to full GURPS, and I use the term full to indicate that you're going to play with a full character meaning all the attributes, secondary attributes, and calculated values, plus whatever skills and advantages that you allow. Which also means that you can use GCS or GCA to create your characters. I don't care which, although I feel that GCS is easier for new players. I've mentioned that it's free, right? Well, now the choice of genre becomes a bit more significant because different genres require different mechanisms. Let's say you decide to do a genre like Old West, or James Bond, or Star Trek, or a basic Monster Hunters theme where you play members of a secret government organization that tracks down and eradicates monsters before the norms can discover the truth. These would be great genres to start in GURPS. Why? Because none of them use extraordinary abilities. All of your player characters are basically human. Maybe elite humans, but not superhuman. And why does this matter? Because it drives what kind of characters your players will be making, and this is driven by the advantages and skills you choose. So in elite human games, most advantages will be familiar to us. I'm going to assume that most of us are human. So we would all understand things like ambidexterity and perfect balance, which means that most people will be able to understand the game rules for a mundane human trait like perfect balance, which is a plus four modifier to your decks when checking balance. So if you stick to the elite human genre, then your list of advantages is not that large and the advantages will be something that most people understand intuitively. Steve Jackson Games has a simple website where you can go through and select the various advantages to indicate if they're required, recommended, allowed, not recommended, or forbidden and whether or not there's some caveat that must be discussed with the GM. You can then copy that list and send it to your players who are building their own characters. The link's in the description. Now remember, your NPCs do not follow the character creation rules. Even with the monster hunter genre, 
All of your player characters will be elite humans, but not superhumans, yet. Of course, most of the evil creatures will have supernatural abilities. Werewolves, vampires, you name it. But you don't need to build them. You can just assign them the traits necessary. You could say that the werewolf slowly regenerates, say one hit point per round, unless poisoned by silver. Or a vampire glistens in the sunlight, or, or melts into a puddle of blood and ashes, depending on which movie you like better. And that if a vampire bites you, you need to make successive health rolls and maybe a willpower roll. And if you fail a health roll, you get temporarily drained of strength. And if you fail the willpower roll, you lose the will to oppose the vampire. You get to be your own game designer here. Your vampires can do whatever you want. They can fly, and you don't have to know the rules for flying or how much it costs. Just say that they can move 10 or 12 hexes per round, and maybe they can only do it for a short while. You decide. I like to make my NPCs as unique as possible. I think it's more fun for the players, and you don't get any of those what, more goblins looks? Since they don't know what my goblins do, although in my world, they're called gobblers, hint, hint. So let's talk a little bit about advantages. Out of the three building blocks of character design, attributes, advantages, and skills, advantages are by far the most difficult because they cover so much. Advantages are broken up into three categories and three types. The categories are mental, physical, and social, meaning that they're based on the capabilities of your mind and will go with you if your character switches bodies, or they're based on the body or based on your identity. Every advantage belongs to one of these three categories. And each advantage is either mundane or normal human, exotic, which means it comes from some kind of ultra tech, or supernatural, which are impossible in nature or with our current science or even super science. The basic set represents these categories and types with these symbols. Notice mundane does not get a symbol. So if you're looking through the advantages list, any advantage with a single symbol is mundane. If it has two symbols, it's either exotic or supernatural. And here's where the homework starts. When you're building a character, everybody's gonna understand attributes and the secondary attributes and the calculated values after a while. And the skills are easy to understand once you understand the success rule. The difficulty comes with what advantages you want to allow. As I mentioned before, the mundane advantages are not difficult to comprehend since they mirror real life. But when you get into exotic or supernatural advantages, then you're breaking the laws of physics. So you'll have to read the advantage to know what it does. Some are pretty easy, like flying. The flying advantage lists out exactly what it does and offers many variations. But others are more complex, like affliction which in my humble opinion is one of the most complex advantages to purchase. And I might make a video specifically about the affliction advantage, but we'll see. But maybe you don't offer that, at least not to start. Sure, some player might want to create a character that can curse an individual or buff one of your party members. And I would suggest that you tell them, no, you can't do that yet. Your character isn't skilled enough to cast a buff and I'm not knowledgeable enough yet to know how to build it. So let's wait. Or you can stick with GURPS Lite. It only has mundane advantages and disadvantages listed, but it's still good enough to get you started. Of course, there are more complex genres, and I'll get to those, but let's continue down this path for now. Now you have your genre, you need to create characters. Yes, you, the GM, should probably create a few characters first. Maybe you're lucky and all of your players decide that they want to build their characters from scratch. That's great but it'd still help you as the GM to have built one or two characters yourself. Build an archetypical example of your gunslinger or your James Bond or your Abe Lincoln vampire hunter. You'll probably have at least one player who doesn't want to build their character by themselves. So it would help if you gave them a starting point. You could build a character up to 75% of your total starting points and give it to them to finish. All right, I haven't mentioned starting points. Okay, page 487 of the basic set describes the various power levels for a GURPS campaign based on your character starting points. In my opinion, you can have a really fun time starting at 150 points. As reference, the GURPS Dungeon Fantasy RPG starts their characters at 250 points. But remember the power level thing I mentioned in the adventures video? 
A character that has a hundred more points than another character isn't twice as powerful. Those points are usually spread across a lot of choices. Which is why I prefer to start at, say, 150 points. And then go up in leaps and bounds, maybe 15, 20, or 25 points per adventure. Not session. The whole idea is to get your players used to the game mechanics and learn the few skills and advantages that they do have. Having a few good skills and a few interesting advantages is perfect. You don't want to flood them with too many choices to start with. Trust me, a 150 point character is more than enough to get started with. But again, you can pick whatever level you want. If you want to start them out as literal apprentices, set your starting point value to 50. And then once they complete their initial adventure, give them another 50 points. They just graduated college or technical school or Hogwarts, whatever. So let's say you decide to go with a James Bond theme. You could create a few archetypical spies. One is a cat burglar type. Another one is the face man. The third is a technical genius. And the fourth is the weapons master, for examples. Create one of each of these, but don't spend all the points. Spend up to 70 or 80% of your starting points and leave the rest of the points for your players to spend if they're interested. If someone says they'd like to make a cat burglar type, you could give them your version and tell them to spend the remaining points to buy more skills or maybe increase an attribute. Don't let them pick different advantages or disadvantages, at least not until you're comfortable with it. But even a beginning GURPS player can understand picking up a new skill. Maybe the cat burglar would like to also be able to shoot guns, besides sneaking, stealthing, and climbing with perfect balance so they could purchase the gun skill of their choice and level it up. Wonderful. You're getting your players used to purchasing their characters. Who knows, one day they might start one from scratch. By the way, you've just created four templates. This is basically what a GURPS template is. You can have more, of course, but this is a start. It's something your players can build from when creating their own characters. So now you have a few characters created or partially created and you're engaging with your players to create their characters. Again, they may want to do it themselves or maybe have you work with them or maybe they just want you to build it for them. It's all good. For added flavor, I would create a few templates of disadvantages as well. The basic set has a list of disadvantages starting on page 119. Just don't go crazy with this to start. The idea is to show your players that they can flavor their character with a few disadvantages. Maybe you just go with minus 30 points in disads, and you could present a few templates like this. And the list could go on and on. Personally, I love this about GURPS. No hero is perfect, and GURPS has spent time to work out how imperfect they can be. Not only does it give the GM something to work with, the soldier's spouse is kidnapped and the party has to go look for her. Or the playboy crashed a party and woke up with a hangover and blood all over their hands as they hear the police sirens coming up the street. But it gives the player something to hang their personality on. But again, as a beginning GM, maybe you only create four or five disadvantage templates. And maybe each with just a single minus ten disadvantage. But it would be something that the players could use to differentiate their characters. Maybe two players choose the cat burglar archetype but one chooses an uh, afraid of heights disadvantage and the other one chooses a noisy disadvantage. They're both cat burglars, but each sucks in their own special way. Of course, this is more reading for you. There are 40 pages of disadvantages. That's why I suggest you only make a few templates first. Find a few disadvantages that would be interesting in your campaign and just offer those, but it's well worth it. Many players, myself included, love to lean into our disadvantages to get the most role-playing that we can. My current character, Gren, suffers from a social stigma. He's a monster, after all, where he gets negative reaction roles from most people. He also has a quirk, which is a one-point disadvantage, that he doesn't recognize it, that people don't like him. So it's really kind of fun to act that out. And honestly, don't most role-players have a little bit of actor in them? Now, for more complex genres, you could choose a Dungeons & Dragons and Pathfinder-like theme, or my beloved Spell Slingers adventure. For the most part, these use normal humans that can cast magic. I've talked about magic here, and you could easily add magic as skills and be done. If you're really focused on the fantasy genre, you could just get the GURPS Dungeon Fantasy RPG and go from there. Character creation is done with large templates, I call them, 
a big recipe list that the player goes through to create their starting player. So the GM doesn't have to make up a list of allowed or restricted advantages. Everything is already worked out and it's all self-contained. But what about superhero genres or aliens or enhanced beings or sorcerers or robots? You get the picture. Well, now you're basically going to need to know the advantage list and how to map it into your character design. I was just re-watching a Spider-Man movie with my wife and I thought about how I would build Spider-Man's web-slinging movement ability. The first thought that came into my head was just make it a flying advantage with an accessibility limitation that it had to work like it does in the movie. There has to be something above and something in the direction that he wants to go to. I wouldn't have him to roll to hit or anything. I mean, you never see Spider-Man miss when he's traveling. In this case, Google is your friend. If you search on a character concept and append the word GURPS to it, You'll probably find at least one, and probably a hundred, posts on how it could be built in GURPS. But remember this, seriously, the character creation rules for building an advantage are only there to calculate a cost in character points, which is used to make certain that your various characters are equal, or at least equally fun. So if you build Superman with super jump and swinging advantages, or you build him with flying, it doesn't really matter. So long as you get close to your design idea, then great. You've figured out a cost and you can move on. Don't get caught up in trying to find the perfect way to build something. Yeah, it might be fun as an intellectual exercise later, but not now. While you're just getting into GURPS, close enough is good enough. Does it really matter if your build is a few points different than someone else's? Not in the slightest. Now again, if you somehow grant a player the flying advantage for five character points because of reasons, well, you'll definitely be outside the norm and the other players might feel like they got gypped. And then there's the situation where you have no idea how to map your character design onto an advantage. Did you notice earlier when I mentioned affliction and buffs? Who would have thought this is how you apply a buff to a party member, right? An affliction? Well, yes, once you read it and posts about it, it finally does make sense. But it was a deep subject to learn, and you might not want to spend a lot of time doing this, especially for your first time. So to summarize, pick a genre, which means determine which advantages you'll allow. I wouldn't worry about limiting skills. For the most part, your players will pick appropriate skills for your setting. But if you have that class clown that wants to spend eight points on levels of computer programming when you are playing in a fantasy setting, well, your choice. Either tell them to pick something else or let them have the skill, but never put any computers in the world. Ha! Mess with the GM, will you? Build some characters for yourself. First off, you'll probably have to build characters for all of your players, so you might as well get used to it. And yes, this goes much easier if you do it in GCS or GCA, I don't care which. I just prefer GCS. You're allowed to start with a smaller list of advantages and add more later. You're not required by GURPS law to include every mundane or exotic or supernatural advantage just because it would fit in your world. Start with a small subset that you know and understand and maybe lower the character point value to start with. Have your players build 100 point characters first. Then after a few sessions and some more reading on your part, Add more advantages to the allowed list and give the players 25 points to level up. And maybe do that a second time, getting to 150 points. Or a third. This gives you time to read up on and learn the new advantages, so you don't have to have them all ready by session zero. Once you have some characters, figure out what level of combat you want to run. Start small and give your players some easy combats at first. I might even have the NPCs introduce new maneuvers so the players can see them in action. The gobbler did what? I wanna do that. And then you start playing. I'm fervently working on a second video concerning gameplay and suggestions for new GMs. It was originally included in this script, but when it went over 30 minutes, I decided to break it up. So it will be coming out next. It's my hope that you will get into GURPS and then fall in love with it and add more features as you investigate new things. That's how I found out about Magic as Powers. As you know, my favorite magic system because I can design it myself and I'm assured that it fits in with the bounds of the game system. But your mileage may vary and this might be enough. But GURPS sucks you in. As you learn one thing and use it, 
you start to think of the next thing. And maybe one day you look that up and think, hmm, this isn't bad. Maybe I'll add that. And so on and so on. This is the real beauty of GURPS. It's an easy framework on which you can hang just about any idea you want. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them, and future viewers might use that as an FAQ. And as always, thank you for watching.